Thank you, thank you so much. Well, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is a beautiful morning to be worshiping together. It's amazing that we're almost to the end of August. I can hardly believe it. If you're worshiping with us online, you are here at the Algona First United Methodist Church, and I am Pastor Cindy Finn, and we are so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. Well, we are working our way through this little tiny book that's so filled with information. It's called The Five Marks of a Methodist by Steve Harper. We are on the third mark. Now, if you've not been with us to learn the marks, the marks of a Methodist so far, we've learned that, God lo that, that Methodists love God and that Methodists rejoice in God. And today, the third mark is um, something um, that you probably do all the time, and that is a Methodist gives thanks. So let's begin, though, our time of worship with our call to worship, if you will stand and join me. You'll find the call to worship on the screen, or you can use your bulletin. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. If you'll stay standing, we're going to sing, This is the Day. Now, rather than a leader and all, I think we're just going to do left and right, okay? So we're going to do your left, so you do the leader part, and you on the right here, you do the all part, okay? And normally this involves standing up and sitting down, but I think we'll just all stay standing if that's okay with you. <laughs> pray together our opening prayer. O Heavenly Father, we, your humble children, invoke your blessing on us. We adore you, whose name is love, whose nature is compassion, whose presence is joy, whose word is truth, whose spirit is goodness, whose holiness is beauty, whose will is peace whose service is perfect freedom, and in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life. Unto you be all honor and all glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you may be seated. Now, as you're sitting, though, I want you to look around and see somebody that you haven't seen in a while, or maybe somebody you don't know. Instead of going over and shaking their hand, though, I want you to throw them a good old peace emoji, okay? Well, this way, peace this way, we're going to throw you a peace emoji online. If you um, are here and in-house in and you'd like to sign in on Facebook, you can send out a peace emoji to those who are worshiping with us online this morning. So here we go. Peace be with you. Did a good job. Thank you so much. Yep, good morning, good morning to everybody online. They're sending good mornings. That's wonderful. Well, if you will, pull out your announcement sheet. There's a couple things going on on that announcement sheet. First of all, I want you to save the, lit the litany of the blessing of the backpacks. We'll save that for a little bit later. But on the other side is our schedule for the week and then some other information for you to remember and keep 
Monday night is administrative council at 6.30, and then Tuesday is our Tuesday prayer. We're right here in the sanctuary. We are led by Pastor Karen. And then Wednesday is pretty exciting stuff. We're starting up our Wednesday night service again. We have not met for our Wednesday night service since way before we had to shut down for COVID. It's been, it's been a long, long time. And so we're starting Wednesday night with a big kickoff. We have some exciting things going on. We have a cookout. We'll have hot dogs and goodies. You have something? Okay. Well, come, come on. Come up. Remember Kim Oldenkamp? She is our Christian ed director. I could just do the happy dance for that one. Do you want to? Yeah, you can use that or you can use this. Okay, so our kickoff is this Wednesday. The barbecue will start at 5.30, and we'll have games, face painting, inflatable slide, water balloons, snow cones, cotton candy cotton machine, candy, yep. Um, yep. bubbles for the littles, sidewalk chalk. It, it's going to be fun. And then we are in need of some lawn games. So if people from the con congregation could let us borrow those, like bags, ladder ball, um, cornhole, it's like bags. Um, just bring them to the church, and if we could use those on Wednesday night, that would be awesome. Um, we are wanting our middle schoolers and high school students to come and be involved on Wednesday night if they are able. I know they are busy, but if they could come and help, that would be great. Um, we will have information about Kids Club and the Adult Bible Study. You can also register your child at this time. Something new on Wednesday night, we are going to have nursery available for parents who want to get involved, um, but they have little ones that are younger than three. We will have nursery available during this time. And our first adult Bible study will be the Walk with Adel, Adam Hamilton. It's about examining the five essential spiritual practices rooted in Jesus' own walk with God. Um, if you would like a book, you can contact me or Megan at the office. Um, that will begin September 8. Um, we have our kickoff and then September 1. Um, is going to be f church family game night. So everybody in the congregation can come, and it's just a time to have fellowship and play games. And it's for all ages, and that's going to be every first Wednesday of the month. So we won't have Bible study or Sunday school, kids club. It will be just family game night every Wednesday night for all ages. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I do think um, uh, Sandy Lay is starting the Apostles' Creed on the 1st, I believe. So um, if you're interested in that, and I think, I'm not sure of the time that she's starting, but she has information on the bulletin board. Um, let's see, we have... Uh, right after worship today, I hope that you will stay because um, we will be um, voting, basically. We'll have a special charge conference to accept money given from Jim and Midge Andreessen. We'll have more information about that. Um, it is uh, needed by the United Methodist Church. Any church that receives more than $5,000 as a gift must have it uh, at a special charge conference and that it must be accepted by the body. And so right after worship today, uh, Tom Larson, who is our chairperson for the foundation, which that's where the Andreessen's left the money, was to the foundation. He'll give some more information about it and where it's going and, and how the Andreessen's wanted it um, placed in the foundation. And then there'll just be a little um, yay or nay vote, not a, not a ballot at all. And um, we will need um, a recording se secretary, somebody that can just take notes for us. It should take what all of, depends on how long we talk, yeah, 10 minutes. 
and how many questions you might have. It won't take very long to do, but we need, we need you to stay and do that with us. Then if you notice on the... Um, on your announcement sheet next Sunday, we start our coffee time. Oh, I'm so excited. Coffee is so wonderful. And um, so be sure that you stay for that. And then um, our mission of the month is school kits. The school supplies are on sale. Be sure that you help out with that. And then you can look at um, the fact that fifth quarter and um, the host for coffee time, there's, info, or there's sheets on the back that you can sign up and be part of that and help out with that. Are there announcements that you would like us to know about? Mm -hmm. Fifth quarter starts this Friday. Oh, fifth quarter's this Friday. Okay, fifth quarter starts this Friday. Okay, so yes, yeah. so if you're not sure what fifth quarter is, it is, uh, we invite seventh graders to 12th graders to come after home football games to just come here and sort of have fun and, and eat food and play games and cry if they lose and Jump and praise if they win, I suppose. Either way, they, they have a good time. Yep. And just a little more information on Wednesday night. Be sure to note the change of the meal time from last time. Right. It used to be at 6 15, we ate. We're now eating at 5 30. So people who want to assist, instead of 5 30 to like 8, we're only going to go 5 to 7, maybe. You know, because we and the rest of us will still be able to be there. So. Yeah. Right. If you couldn't hear Tim, he's saying that the time has changed from the last time we had fifth quarter, and we're now eating at 5.30. So um, if you want to eat, you need to be here by 5.30. If you would like to help, please, 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 maybe I should be on my knees. Um, yep, there's a sheet on the back table. And you don't have to sign up. I'm more than positive that if you find out you have a little space on Wednesday to give, a little bit of time, Tim will... That's right, Tim <laughs> Tim would be happy to have you. Are there others that you would? Uh -huh. Bells are at 6.15. Right, right. Bells are at 6.15. That's a change from what um, is in the, on the announcement sheet. Others? Oh, I know the announcement time today took a little bit longer, but you know, it is so much fun. I can't even tell you how much fun it is to have our fall activities up and going again after COVID and needing to be careful and shut things down. And I'm just so excited and feeling very blessed that we are able to have a, a full house and have things happening. So please, 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 as we uh, move into our time of, of um, conversations with God and, uh, and joys and concerns, please add in your prayer every day that, that COVID COVID behaves itself and stays where it needs to be, and that is not on the face of the earth, in my opinion. But we want to be able to have all of our fall activities. Any other announcement you would like? Okay, then let's move to our next part of our, our service today, and that is our joys and our concerns. And um, so I want to open it up to you and, and have you tell me what, what would you, who would you like prayer for? What, what things are happening in your life that is so exciting that you want us to know about? And then um, secondly, um, what joys do you, what joys do you have? Where is God working in your life? Okay, well let me tell you, first of all, that... Um, uh, Rita Buffington had her, her surgery on her ankle, and she is recovering well, and so she would enjoy very much having your prayers and lifting, um, lifting her up in prayer. And then also Julie Hayes had breast surgery last week at Mayo Clinic, and she is also recovering well and would love to have your prayers. And then also, um, I would ask that you lift up the, the Walker family, Minnie Walker um, died uh, day before yesterday. No, yes, just yesterday. It seems like it's just, yeah. And if you'll remember, Minnie is um, the mother of um, Judy Samp, as well as Jean Kent, who are members of our church. And I believe, and you can correct me, um, that Walt Reemsma plays a piano for us on um, Saturday nights. He will be officiating that funeral. And I believe that the visitation is from four to seven, five to seven. 
5 to 7 Monday night, and then funeral 1030 Tuesday morning, all at First Presbyterian. So be sure that you support the Walker family. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. Stressful, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joy, joys and tears. Yeah. 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 Yes. I thank you for praying for us last weekend. Their mom passed away. Yes. Pam Lewis passed. And um, Aaron's mother. Yes, yes. So be sure that, that you lift up um, Aaron's family and the Lewis family as his father found out um, that cancer has returned. And so lift up, lift up their family. It's been a rough, rough go. Kind of a hard, hard to say goodbye to college kids and, and then especially hard changes in your family. Yeah. Yes, Renee. Sure. And now we're starting to get into fall and winter where people, you know, things hurt a lot more like fibromyalgia and people start thinking, you know, suicide and all that nasty stuff. But I really appreciate prayers for those people. Could you hear Renee what she said? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, definitely. You know, people put on a good face, don't they? Yeah. So yes, pray for those silent illnesses. Are there others? Oops. Tim? Uh, we have a joy. Tomorrow is our 41st wedding anniversary. Wow. <laughs> Happy anniversary, 41 years. That's wonderful. Others? Please remember, um, those who are in uh, Afghanistan right now, I can't imagine what's going on in the country. Um, you know, we hear a lot of things coming through the news that sounds pretty scary to me. So be sure that you lift up Afghanistan and continue to lift up Haiti, the country of Haiti. They not only have social unrest, but also, you know, earthquake and hurricanes that natural disasters are, are ripping through, have ripped through the country as well. Are there others that you would lift up? Okay. Let's take a moment of silence then to allow God to fill our hearts and, and to allow us time to offer the prayers that are within our minds, but we just don't say out loud for others to know. We'll follow this time with a pastoral prayer, and then I'll invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Let's pray together. O oh, Holy One, we, as every week, offer you thanks. We praise your name on high and know that we are never alone. We thank you for filling our hearts with your love and for bringing us together today. Whether we're in this place or watching online, maybe we're even later on in the week. We thank you that you have brought us together to worship you. We, your body, lift you and thank you for all that you do for us, the many blessings that you offer to not just this congregation, to all who are around the world. 
O gracious one, we are in awe of you as we praise your very name. Today we have lifted many prayers. There are many prayers that have been spoken and unspoken, and we ask that you be with those who are in need of healing, who are in need of comfort in grieving, and who need peace in, in, in turmoil. We ask that you dance with us in joy and that you hold us when we're afraid. We pray that you be with those who do not know you, that you be with those who, who are in war-torn countries or in the midst of oppression or in the middle of natural disaster. O oh, gracious one, we know that even if we don't mention a particular prayer concern, you are all over it. For you are faithful, and you are kind, and you are filled with grace and mercy, and we, your people, count on you as you count on us. O oh Lord, your Son walked this earth, and he helped us to know you. Those who walked around him were in awe of of how he healed and how he told all about your love. And though we don't see him physically, we know that Jesus walks with us as well. And so now we, we pray back to you, the prayer that Jesus taught us, so that you know without a doubt that we believe, Lord. Will you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now it's our time to remember those who are going to school as students, those who will be working in the school system, either as a teacher or an associate or a bus driver or a custodian or any capacity with the school, or maybe you are an adult and you are taking some classes. You're going back to school. Maybe you are um, taking an online class. And today we're going to celebrate you and pray for you and pray for your year. Now, there is in the insert in, the, um, in your bulletin, there's a lit litany of the blessing of the backpacks. So if you would like to come up, if you're young, or an adult and you'd like to come up, come up here. If not, you may stay to your, at your seat and, I'm, and I'll have you stand. So do you want to come up or do you want to stay where you are? It's okay, it's, it's all good. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand, if you're a student or a teacher or an associate or in some way you're working in the school system, or maybe you, you um, are an adult and you're going back to school or you've been going to school, would you stand and let us recognize you? Would you do that? Let us know, oh, Chase did bring his backpack. Look at this, this is great. Oh, show us, what's on the front? Ooh, it looks cool. That looks great. Chase, you have grown over the summer, hasn't he? I'm feeling shorter around you. So um, anyway, so here I have for you something that actually Megan, our administrative secretary, um, she has been working on this very hard. And these are um, some little keychains that you can put, and you can sit down once, once you're receive one if you want to. You can stay standing if you want to. Coming around this way. Now these little keychains have some verses on them. In the front of the keychain says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Pass those down. And Greta, I'm going to give you one of these because 
there isn't quite as many words, okay? Okay, very good. Everybody get one? Okay, very good, there you go. So it says, again, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's Joshua 1.9, and it says, we love you and pray for you, your church family, the Algona First United Methodist Church. So it has all kinds of little verses in it that hopefully, and there are about eight of them, that hopefully you can look at throughout the week and each day of the week and give you courage and strength and remember that we're praying for you. So if you, I have several of them, so if you have a young one at home or someone that should have one of these, you can please, please take them and pick them up and, and take them with you. Maybe you should take two because you have two, two teachers that need, need some strength and courage. They probably have started already, haven't they, with band camp and all that? Yeah, so I'm gonna put these up here. So right now, if you will pull out your little litany here, let's pray over our, all of our students and our um, school people here, and also um, just be thinking in your mind and in your heart about our school system and, and how things will be starting up this year. And, and um, I'm thinking a whole lot about my little beau who starts kindergarten on Wednesday. So he's all excited. He has no idea what he's in for, no clue, not even, mm -mm, not even a clue. So there's a left, so left, right, and then I'll take the leader part, okay? Left, will you start? Backpacks, school bags, pencil boxes, too. God is with us in our learning and in all that we do. New teacher, new classmates, new subjects to learn. And now let us pray together and online. You had to choose if you were left or right, but you can pray with us as well. We thank you, God, for resources and school supplies that help our children and students of all ages. We thank you for children and all involved in our children's education. We ask you to bless workers with children, the children of this extended community, and persons of all ages who seek to learn and to grow. Amen. Please hold our, our, all of our students and those who are working in the school systems. Please add them to your daily devotions. They need our prayers, not just at the beginning of the school year, but all year round. So now is our time of giving, and um, our giving highlight of the month is Kids Club and youth group and adult groups. And again, I'm, I'm so excited about Wednesday night and hope that you will add the Wednesday night service to your devotions every day, but that you will not only give monetarily, but that you will think about giving of yourself. Um, we, we, need, uh, we need your expertise. I believe with everything I have that God has placed all that we need here in this body of Christ, that all of the gifts and the talents that we need to help not only our children, but adults grow in their faith. And so if God is itching you in the back of your mind, come and help. Um, if you are an adult and you'd like to teach adults and you have an idea, we'd love to hear it. Or if you would like to share even, maybe even what you do, you, you think that that might be a wonderful lesson for children to learn, we'd love to hear about that too. So think about that and give of yourself to our, our Christian growth time. Now I know you can say this with me. We have our giving um, plates in the back that you may give of your tithes and your offerings. And if you want to give to our August giving of the month, put that on top of your regular tithes and offerings. We have our mailbox in the breezeway outside of the office that you can drop your offerings. You can mail your offerings in. 
you can go to algonaumc.com on the giving toggle, the online giving toggle, it'll send you to Vanco, our giving online giving service, or you can put an app on your phone and you can give that way and I can help you do that. Right now, let's say a prayer and thank God. Let's pray together. We thank you, gracious and holy one, for all that you do through our Christian growth. We pray that you will give us strength as we begin our Wednesday night service and that you will provide for us. We know that you will, but we in our own weakness need to ask. Gracious one, we pray today as we have given to you not only of our monetary funds, but also of ourselves, that it lifts your name on high and helps others grow in their Christian journey. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. So now is our time for children. And so if you will, um, it, you don't have to come down if you don't want to, but I'd love to have you come and sit with me. Do you want to? Okay, come on, come. And if you are online, tell mom and dad to put you up next to the computer or the phone or wherever you're watching. It's okay. It's okay. Thanks, Chase. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Okay, what is the coolest thing somebody has... Ooh, you okay? Yeah, okay, good. What is the coolest thing somebody has ever given you? Not sure? What do you think? What's that? Your ATV? That's the coolest thing? Yeah, I bet that is pretty cool. I bet that's fun too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so think about, think about something that somebody has given you, okay? What did you do after they gave it to you? After you jumped up and down, yes, yes, yes. After that, what did you do? You used it, it. uh-huh, yeah. You said thank you. You kind of know the theme of the day, right? Yeah, thank you. Have you ever had to say thank you to somebody? I mean, like mom and dad said, that was really nice, go say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yep. Have you ever had to write a thank you card? Yeah, sometimes. Or a thank you email. I don't know if you do that. You don't do emails? Okay, that's good. But I bet adults, you've sent like thank you emails before, right? To thank you to somebody for something. Or maybe call them on the phone and say thank you. Yeah. Was it hard to say thank you? A little embarrassing? No? No? Okay, good. I'm glad. When I was a little, little, little person like you, younger person, um, physically little do, um, my grandmother, that was a big thing for her, was that if somebody did something nice, you had to send a thank you card. And so she would pop out thank you cards. I don't know where she found them, like eh, everywhere. So there was a thank you card all over her house. And she'd pop out these thank you cards and we'd, we'd have to sit, my sisters and I, and write thank you cards to people, which was a good thing to do. And something that hopefully, um, you know, people appreciated to see that thank you. I know that God is another one who likes to hear thank you. Only it's kind of hard to write God a thank you card, isn't it? Yeah, where would you mail it to? That's right, you can't really ship it to the heavens, that's right. So you, can't, you know, it's kind of hard to write a thank you card to God. But there are some things we can do to show God that, yeah, we can pray. And that helps God know that we're thankful. There are other things that we can do. We could do nice things. Chase, you're on a roll. This is wonderful. We could do nice things to people. And that shows, you know, that shows that we thank God. And maybe the person that we're doing something nice to doesn't know we're thanking God. But maybe it shows them who God is through us. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Just say thank you. Yeah. I think that's a really wonderful thing to do, is to just say thank you. And, a, and after a bit, we're going to talk about John Wesley and, and some of the ways that he said thank you, and maybe some of the ways we can. John. Who's John Wesley? Well, John, boy, you get me started on that. 
John Wesley was, we considered him the person who founded Methodism. We're called Methodists. Mm -hmm. And he used to say, he used to have a way that he did things, a method. Like if you do math, because I'm an old math teacher, if you ever have trouble in math, you talk to Pastor Cindy, okay? Okay. So, and that goes for anybody. If you ever have any trouble in math, I'm happy to help because I'd love to do your homework. Because <laughs> I kind of like it. But um, when you do math, there's a method to do it, a certain way that you do math. Well, for John Wesley, there was a certain way that, we, that he s studied and that he learned about God. And so other people were teasing him and called him, said, you have a method. You guys are all just Methodists. He hated that. But then it stopped, and we're all called Methodists today. And I don't mind it so bad. What do you think? Nah, it's okay. Nah, it's just Methodists. That's right. Well, I think we should pray and ask God for help giving thanks, because sometimes it, it's hard to remember. So let's pray. Will you help us, big people? Will you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for being our God and for us being your child. Help us to say thank you in all we say and do. Amen. Thanks so much. Thank you for coming up and being with me. Thank you, thank you. So let's sing, shall we? Stay seated, you don't have to get up. And this is kind of a Thanksgiving song, but it's all good. It's number 102 in the hymnal. It's called, Now Thank We All Our God. two lessons today, one from the book of Galatians and the second one from the book of Ephesians, or uh, excuse me, Philippians. Both are accredited to the Apostle Paul and both definitely um, speak about thanksgiving and looking towards God for, in, in blessing. So the first is Galatians 3 verses 14 through 17. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds together in perfect harmony. And let, pe let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called 
in the one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Our second is, passage is from Philippians, and this is Philippians 4, 8 through 13. Now, as Pastor Karen says, she has all kinds of favorites in the Bible. The book of Philippians, I go back to over and over and over again. So if I would say a, a, a very favorite of the New Testament, Philippians would probably be one that I would say is a favorite. The Apostle Paul writes to the, to, um, the church in Philippi, Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. He writes, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I've learned to be content in whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty, and any in any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I think that's probably the verse of all of that that you probably know the best. You probably memorized it. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Now these are the words of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. Well, I've been looking, um, I, oh, I'm always looking online, but I found some very interesting experiments online. They're called gratitude experiments. And um, these particular, there's lots of different ones. These particular experiments can be found, like I said, online. You can find YouTube where they show, actually show the experiment. You can also find them in psychology kind of magazines as well. And most of these experiments include uh, making lists of things that are these, these are gratitude experiments. And they include making lists of things that we're grateful for. In these gratitude experiments, the idea is to see if listing or talking about being grateful, if that helps us in our well-being and in uh, greater happiness. So most, like I said, most of these experiments, regardless of where they are and, and, and who's running the experiment, they ask people to make lists. Now in this one particular experiment, um, this experiment on gratitude, the individuals who were participating were asked every single day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, each day to take a few moments every day and write in a journal things that they were grateful for. And so they were just asked to take a little bit of time and do that. On Saturday, that, that considered the end of the week, on Saturday they were asked to go back and look at the lists and pick a, a, pick a person. So if they listed a person that they were thankful for, they were asked to pick a person and to sit down and write a letter to that person on why they were grateful for them. You know? So... Then they were asked to either mail the letter or, better yet, call the person and read the letter to them. Now, one, this one particular experiment that they actually had them come back into the lab and, and call the person that they wrote the letter to, they measured the happiness of them coming, starting, starting the experiment and then at the end when they after they had called a person and had talked to the person and somehow I don't know how they measured it but somehow they said that a person increased their happiness and their well-being by almost 20 percent 
Now, like I said, I don't know how they measured that, how they were able to do that. But I don't know about you, I would love to be able to increase my well-being by 20%. And if all that takes is for me to write in a journal the things that I'm thankful for and then tell somebody or tell, you know, maybe, maybe it's your cat, it would probably, might be my cat at times, then if that raises my gratitude and my well-being by 20%, to me that's all worth it. This idea of gratitude was something that was really important to John Wesley as well. In fact, it was so important to John Wesley, this, this ability to give thanks. It was so important to him that, he, that we give thanks to God that he listed it as the third mark of discipleship, the third mark of a Methodist. Now, I told you that back in um, about 1730, John Wesley had been working and made himself, av made himself available to several people um, who were from other denominations but wanted to deepen their walk with Christ. And so the groups became big and the leaders became many. And so he ended up writing this little article called The Character of a Methodist. And I've been asked to send this out online. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead, Sandy, if you're watching. I have not done it yet, but I will send this out to you online. Here, John Wesley... It, it, lists the marks of a Methodist, and this individual, I showed you this little book before, this little, this little book, The Five Marks of a Methodist, Steve Harper, who is a retired United Methodist clergy out of Florida, has taken this, this document and he has written about the five marks of the Methodist. So John Wesley, um, he writes, as we, um, as we learned two Sundays ago, two weekends ago, we learned that he wrote about how a Methodist loves God. And last week, if you weren't able to join us, we talked about how John Wesley says that a Methodist rejoices in God. And today we're talking about how John Wesley believes that Methodists give thanks to God. And so um, this is divided up into, into different paragraphs. And so in the seventh paragraph, this is what John says. He says, those who have, have hope are full, uh, understand that they are full of immortality and in everything give thanks. Knowing this, that it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning him. From God, therefore, the Methodist cheerfully receives all, saying, Good is the will of the Lord. And whether the Lord gives or takes away, equally blessing the name of the Lord. For the Methodist learns in whatever state he or she is in to be content. The Methodist knows both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, the Methodist is instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. Whether in ease or in pain, whether in sickness or in health, whether in life or in death, the Methodist gives thanks from the ground of his or her heart to God who orders it for good, knowing that as every good gift comes from above, None but good can come from the Father of lights. It goes on, and if you get a chance to read more, please do. It's very interesting. I enjoy reading this, but, and I've read it many times before. This is not my first time to read through the character of a Methodist. But I will say that this particular pa paragraph gives me, well, what's the opposite of goosebumps? Heebie-jeebies? You know, if that's even a word, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. I'm not sure that I can give thanks in this way. I'm not sure that I can give thanks knowing that I have to give thanks whether I am full or hungry, whether I am abound, or that means thriving, or whether I'm suffering, whether I am in ease or pain, whether I am sick or unhealthy, whether I am in life or death. I'm supposed to give thanks in all of it. Well, that, that makes me really uncomfortable because I'm not sure that I'm strong enough to give thanks in all of that. 
It makes me uncomfortable, and yet it makes me know that this is something that God expects us to do and something that, that I've tried very hard throughout my life to do. It also is something that, that Steve Harper, in the Five Marks of a Methodist, says that he has trouble with as well. He writes in this book, he says, I believe these words are true, but on any given day I question the mark, sometimes profoundly. How are we to give thanks in every situation when some situations seem not to come from the will of God but straight out of the pits of hell? There is no way to sidestep this reaction in the life of discipleship because it happens to all of us sooner or later, directly or indirectly. We have good reason to begin this chapter, he says, with asking Wesley, John Wesley, John, what are you doing? What are you saying? You see, for John Wesley, this was serious business. To be thankful was so much more than just being obnoxiously cheerful. You know, that person that when you go into the, to a clothing store or into some store and they they're walk up with their smile on their face and shake your hand hoping you'll spend money there and they're going to be smiley no matter what. It isn't about that. It isn't about avoiding people um, because we don't want to tell them how we really are. And we've talked about this before. You know, you go up to somebody and, and you say, how are you doing today? Well, the expected response is always, fine, it's good. When you know darn good and well, it isn't. I'm guilty of that one. So that's, this, this being thankful is so important to John Wesley. It's deeper than any and all of that. Harper writes that it's all about gratitude for John Wesley. That gratitude is the Christian's response to God. Now John Wesley looks at gratitude according to um, Steve Harper in a couple different ways. First of all, gratitude is about our response to the grace that God gives to us. Now John Wesley, he spent an awfully lot of time being thankful to God. And he spent a lot of time being in prayer before God. In fact, it is said that every single day he spent um, a, a fair amount of time in prayer. And some people I've read even said that, that he stopped um, hour by hour and would um, kneel before God and pray. One of the prayers that Steve Harper offers that John Wesley would pray every day is this prayer. And I want to share it with you because I think it's, it's quite nice. God, you are the great creator and sovereign Lord of heaven and earth. You, the father of angels and human beings, you are the giver of life and the protector of all your, creation, all your creatures. Mercifully accept this, my morning sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which I desire to offer with all humility to your divine majesty. Now John Wesley then, kind of like the experiment that we were talking about before, he would pray every day of the week, and then Saturday, according to Steve Harper, John Wesley would be on his knees and he would be praying, but then he would also be asking himself some questions. First of all, he would ask, and this is in his, kind of his kind of language, have I allotted some time for thanking God for the blessings of the past week? Basically, have I thanked God this week? Have I, in order to be more sensible of them, seriously and deliberately considered the several circumstances that attended them? In other words, what was around? Why, did, why was I saying thing, thanks and, and why, why was I having gratitude? And number three, have I considered each of them as an obligation to greater love and consequently to stricter holiness? I think that some of that's really quite deep and probably not the way that we pray and ask ourselves questions. But I think we can kind of do with that gratitude experiment and pick a day of the week or maybe several days of the week and ask ourselves even just that first question, have I said thanks to God? Maybe even every night before we go to bed, saying our prayers and, and devotions to, help, to fall asleep and, and to fall asleep in God's arms, maybe we can just say, have I said thanks to God? And then spend time giving thanks before God. You see, for John Wesley, that grace, knowing that God offers us grace, it's free grace, it's grace that is unmerited. We don't have to do anything for it. We are forgiven people for, 
anything that we do. We are forgiven people. And to have gratitude in that is an amazing thing that we can do before God. Now, if you're like me, sometimes, you know, I'm in the business uh, of talking about God and being, <laughs> being in, in God's presence and helping other people to be in the presence of God. But I will find myself sometimes even halfway through the day after I've spent a lot of time um, working, through, uh, working through what needs to happen in the church. And then all of a sudden, I find myself halfway through the day and realize I haven't given thanks to God. I haven't even really talked to God. It's amazing how that works. I don't know if that happens for you. Now, so having gratitude because of the grace of God. Secondly, John Wesley believed that the gratitude in, in God was all about just God being God. That no matter what we go through, the deep and the dark places, no matter the, the excitement and the joy, no matter what we go through, that, that we must give gratitude to God just because God is God. God is God. Now, it reminds me of, a, of during the time that we weren't meeting, um, on, that we were meeting only online during COVID, it reminds me of um, Michael J. Fox. We, several of us did, um, looked at a book called No Time Like the Future by Michael J. Fox. Now, you may remember Michael J. Fox, he's the back to the future guy, and, and um, so he, he's um, known to have Parkinson's disease and, and known not to, not to be doing very well with the Parkinson's, but, but having great optimism. And so Michael J. Fox, he, in his book, writes about um, the fact that the, he found himself one day laying on his kitchen floor with a broken arm, and he felt his optimism waning. And so he wrote this book, No Time Like the Future, because he wanted, um, he wanted others to know how he, um, how he brought his optimism back into his life. And he writes these words. Optimism is really rooted in gratitude, he says. Optimism is sustainable when you keep coming back to gratitude. And what follows from that is acceptance. Accepting that this thing, this thing has happened and you accept it for what it is. It doesn't mean that you can't endeavor to change it. It doesn't mean you have to accept it as a punishment or a penance, but put it in its proper place. And then see how much of the rest of your life you have to thrive in. And then you can move on. No matter what you're doing, no matter what you're going through, to have gratitude in God just because God is God is definitely being part of um, a Methodist, being a Methodist. So we can all wallow in our issues or we can be grateful in the middle of them. Harper says that we can live into life. And that the third mark of disciple of the disciple is more than positive thinking or having a pleasant disposition, both of which are commendable, he says. Rather, Wesley commends the deep response to grace that produces an outlook on life that brings us to each day and to the end of life itself, grateful for having the privilege of living on this earth. So join me. Join me in being thankful. It's hard some days. I get weak some days. I mean, life sometimes is, is tough. We all get weak, and, and we can have a rough time and forget to say thanks. We can all be cynical some days and have a rough time and forget to say thanks. We can all have a really, really, really wonderful day and spend a day all day long with family and still forget to say thanks. So join me in living the marks of a Methodist and giving thanks to God. Let's pray together. We thank you, gracious one. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In all things, we give thanks. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now, will you stand? And we have to give thanks in song. And let's sing Grace Alone. It's found in um, the faith we sing, number 2162.
Now go, being a Methodist, love God, rejoice in God, and be thankful because of all that God has done for you. Don't hold it to yourself. Show others that love and that rejoicing and that thankfulness in all that you say and do. And may the, may the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you in great love. And all the people said, Amen. Now, if you'd like to stay and be part of our charge conference, please do. And um, if you're not, have a wonderful Sunday. If you're going to stay, just sit down and we're going to get it going. Thank you.